At a rally in New Hampshire on Tuesday, Joe Biden said something regarding Donald Trump and the Republican Party that is so naive, so almost borderline delusional, it nearly made my head explode. Essentially, what he's going to do is cleanse the Republican Party of all their wrongdoing and say, it's not you who's the problem, it's Donald Trump who's the problem. And not only will he imply that, but he'll take it a step further and actually suggest that once Donald Trump is out, the Republican Party will suddenly have an epiphany and they're going to fundamentally change because seeing how bad Donald Trump was is going to make them want to do better. That sounds kind of... Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually going to suggest this. He says, we found ourselves in a position where an awful lot of Republicans have become intimidated, intimidated by the president. The thing that will fundamentally change things is with Donald Trump out of the White House. Not a joke. You will see an epiphany occur among many of my Republican friends. And it's already beginning. In the House now, you've seen people that, in fact, were not willing to vote for any Democratic initiative, even if they agreed with it, because they didn't want to be the odd person out if it wasn't going to happen. There's not sense in getting politically beaten for something that's not going to happen. But you are seeing the talk, even the dialogue, is changing. So look, let me put it another way. If we can't change, we're in trouble. This nation can't function without generating consensus. I can't believe he thinks this. Now, I don't know if he's pandering to moderate Republicans who he's trying to win over or if he genuinely believes this, but this is absurd. What he's saying here is Trump is the problem. And if you get rid of Donald Trump, if you take out that one blemish on the Republican Party's otherwise okay record, I guess, then everything else will be... Peachy Keen. Joe, I don't understand how you don't remember this, but in the pre-Trump era, when you were in the White House for two different terms, you literally adopted the Republican Party's right-wing healthcare reform. The ACA was modeled after a plan that was devised by the Heritage Foundation. It was basically Romney Care. You took their plan, Joe, and they gave you zero votes. And on top of that, they went on to try to repeal that more than 50 times. You selected a center-right Supreme Court justice to get them on board, and Mitch McConnell didn't even allow one hearing to be held for Merrick Garland. They literally stole a Supreme Court justice from you. This was all pre-Trump. And you're saying that once Trump is gone, then Republicans will suddenly have an epiphany? Joe, Donald Trump isn't some kind of aberration. He's not an exception to the rule. He is the rule. Donald Trump puts an ugly face to repulsive Republican Party policies. But with Joe, he's not too down on the policies that Donald Trump is implementing. Neither are these center-right Republicans. These so-called moderate Republicans like Anna Navarro. Because if you remove Donald Trump from the situation and you replace him with someone who doesn't do mean tweets, who isn't as belligerent, who's at least somewhat intelligent, but you just have him doing all the same policies, they'll be okay with that. So the one thing that really differentiates Trump from the rest of the GOP is that he's angry, he's mean. I don't, I don't honestly understand how someone who was the vice president for two terms can come to this conclusion when he saw their obstruction, their extremism firsthand. And the reason why, Joe, they're so insane is because you let them get this way. If you have a strong opposition party who firmly plants their feet in the ground and says, we're not going to follow you off a cliff as you march towards the extreme right, then you force them to return back to the center, but you haven't done that. Democrats have been so weak, they've just followed Republicans towards the right. And now we're in this awful hellscape situation where both parties 
are right-wing, one is center-right, the other is right-wing. And now, it really doesn't seem like there's any change when we elect a president in different parties. Think about this. When George W. Bush left office, did Obama end the war in Iraq? Did he end the Afghanistan war? No. He ramped up the drone war that Bush started using the Bush doctrine. And then when Obama left office, we had someone else come in and say, look, I'm non-interventionist. Now, there were a lot of signs, a lot of red flags that indicated Trump wouldn't be as anti-intervention as he suggested on the campaign trail. But what did he do? Immediately ramps up the drone war, is escalating now in Venezuela, in Iran. I mean... I don't understand how Joe Biden can say this, but maybe it's because the difference between Democrats and Republicans, it really is becoming more blurred. That line is getting less distinguishable and there's still considerable difference. I don't want to do this false equivalence, but what I'm trying to say is that if you think that Trump is the exception to the rule, I don't know what to say. You're just not that bright, Joe. You are not that bright if you genuinely believe something this stupid. I mean, I, it's unfathomable to me that someone can think this. The Republican Party would suddenly have this epiphany if Trump is out. Donald Trump is the perfect representation of the Republican Party. And guess what? The base loves him. The base absolutely loves him because he has, what, 87 90% approval rating after his first 500 days in office, higher than other party approval ratings of presidents in the past, of most anyways. I mean, this makes no sense. It just shows that Biden here in saying, you know, the nation can't function without consensus. What he's telling you is that he's going to get in office and he's going to do the exact same thing that made President Obama so ineffectual. He's going to extend a hand to Republicans and they're going to shoot him down. They're going to spit in his face and he's going to keep coming back for more. It's like he's a masochist. There's an old saying in Tennessee. I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee. that says, fool me once. Shame on Shame on you. <laughs> if fool me, we can't get fooled again. So, in other words, if you keep trying to meet them halfway, you're meeting crazy halfway. It's the same thing with climate change. There were two individuals close to Biden who claimed he wants some sort of middle ground when it comes to climate change policy. Now, he has since backtracked and said, no, I'm not seeking middle ground, but we all know that that's exactly what he's going to do. But if you even have this thought that you need to seek out middle ground between denying climate change and doing something about climate change, or at least acknowledging that it exists, then you're already losing. Because if you concede halfway with someone who's insane, then that's a loss for you no matter what. Because you're agreeing that this insane person is at least partially legitimate. So Joe Biden is out of his mind if he genuinely believes this. Part of me thinks that maybe he's just pandering to Republicans who he thinks he needs to win over. But Joe, if this is actually your strategy, look at what Hillary Clinton did. She was not successful in winning over moderate Republicans, and you won't be any more successful. It wasn't necessarily because Hillary Clinton was unable to win over moderate Republicans. It was because she didn't pursue the correct electoral strategy, and it seems as if you're not going to do that as well. The correct strategy, if you make it to the general, which I hope you don't, I hope it's Bernie or Tulsi or Warren, but if you make it to the general, what do you need to do to defeat Donald Trump? You get people who haven't voted to come out and vote for you. You galvanize the base. You go after non-voters. Because these so-called moderate Republicans, they're going to stick with Donald Trump. They like what he's doing. They don't mind the mean tweets. And even if everyone in Washington, D.C., if the elite media class, the pundits, all screech about how decorum is ruined because of Donald Trump, understand that the base likes him. And acknowledge that Trump isn't that much different than Republicans. If anything, I'd say McConnell or Mike Pence even is worse than Donald Trump because politically, I think they would be more dangerous because they'd actually be able to get their agenda accomplished because they have experience. They know what they need to do to win politically and appease their donors. So I, again, am puzzled by Joe Biden's ignorance here if he genuinely believes this, but I hope he's pandering. I mean, well, I don't hope he's pandering, but it would just be bizarre to say something that dim-witted after he saw firsthand. 
how insane the Republican Party was even before Donald Trump was in the picture. <laughs> Look, we've got to defeat Joe Biden because if he wins, you, you've you already seen he's been in the race now for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, and it's not going too well. He's put his foot in his own mouth like 1,800 times, and this could be a disaster if he wins.